So in this video I'm gonna show you the huge update Adobe did to Lightroom in the masking and selecting department. It is now way easier and faster to edit specific parts of the image by combining and intersecting layers of masks. Besides not being able to use AI to select things like the subject and the sky in your picture, things that you had to do manually before using the brush. So let's check it out. Yeah, I'm Manny, a Brazilian photographer and filmmaker living in Italy, and in this channel I help you with the tech tools to be creative. And today we're going to talk about this massive update that Adobe did to actually all of their softwares inside the Creative Cloud, and specifically to Lightroom, in which these masking and selecting tools are now much more precise. They are kind of like a step into Photoshop, but not really. So let's just go directly to the computer. I'm going to show you where these new tools are, how to use them, and how would I approach editing a picture with this new way of editing. Let's do it. All right, so to start with, this is the version that Adobe Lightroom is right now on my computer. So if you're not seeing this on your computer, you should check first in the Creative Cloud if there are any updates available and just get the most up-to-date version. This is 11.0 Lightroom 2022. So in the library module, you actually don't see any difference. It's when you get inside the develop module that you're gonna see that now there's a totally different interface on the top part over here. That weird brush symbol is gone and is now replaced by this masking icon over here. So instead of selecting the filter that you want directly, you're gonna click first the masking, then all the options are gonna come down here. So as you can see, we still got the brush, linear and radial gradients, they're all inside here, even if they have some difference that I'm gonna show you in a while, but also you got directly now color range and luminance, which use it to be inside linear or radio. And of course, as you probably heard already and you saw here, now we have two new features which are select subject and select sky. So let's just click one of them because I want to show you also what happens after. Whenever you click any of the options in the list, it's going to pop up this new masks tab that is just going to be floating around or you can actually dock it to the same place where all the tools are. Just for the sake of visibility, I'm going to leave it here for a while. So this is actually a small step towards Photoshop to help in the photo editing process so that you don't need to go to Photoshop every single time for some things that should be a little bit more simple. And the idea is very similar. You can see a list of all the masks that you've created. You can see a small thumbnail of what exactly is selected. And you can now organize your edits coming here and just renaming it with whatever you want. Like for example, sky. On the thumbnail, you see as white whatever is selected and you see as black what's not selected. And on the screen, on the image itself, you're going to see a color overlay that you can actually change to whatever you prefer. And the idea is the same. Whatever is colored on the image is going to be affected by whatever edit you do and what's not colored won't be changed at all. If you're not familiar to masking, the idea here is that you're going to be selecting a part of the image and this is going to help you tell what is selected and with which intensity. So in this case, for example, I just selected green as my overlays. So all the sky selected by Lightroom automatically is a very vivid green. Instead, on the top of the mountains, there is a very light green going on, which is just like the reflection from the sky and the reflection from the blue that existed around there. It could be a more harsh selection, but Lightroom decided to do something a little bit more softer that fades through. If you click here on show overlay, it's just going to turn it off and you can see the original image, but it's still selected. You can also press O on the keyboard and it's going to have the same effect. The color can be changed by clicking on the square over here and then you have this panel to totally customize the way the masks work within your Lightroom. In this case, for example, I chose green because the picture mostly had oranges and reds, so a totally different color makes it much easier to identify what's selected and what's not. And also you can select the opacity that you want for this mask. So here I was in the maximum. So when the sky is selected, for example, I can't see anything below it. So you might prefer to put it halfway so that you have an idea of what's selected and at the same time you can still see the image. You could also switch making what's green being the unaffected area instead of the affected area. But I think this would probably complicate your life later on when you get used with Photoshop and you have someone else working with you. So I would just leave it as it is if you don't have a very good reason to change it. One other thing you can do is to just change the type of overlay that you're having. In this case here, it's just like a color overlay. So green gets painted wherever it's selected. But you could also do a color over black and white to make it much easier to identify what's selected. You could do the image on black and white. You can do the image on black and you can do also image on white. So depending on the picture, it's going to be easier if you choose one way or the other. And you can also cycle through them really quickly if you just do out O. Another very quick and cool shortcut that you can use is pressing S on the keyboard 
to find all the selective edits that it did. In this case here, you just have one, but when you have many, this makes it so much easier. And if you're used with the older versions of Lightroom, you know that when you get full of radio filters and linear filters everywhere, it's just so complicated to remember which one is doing what in the scene. So pressing S just makes it easier to find it. And also now you can use actually the list to find whatever you want. So let's take a tour through all the filters and see what they have new. I'm just going to reset this one. So I'm just gonna click here in the masking and I'm gonna select the brush first. The brush looks more or less the same and you can adjust the size, feather, flow, density, more or less the same as we had before and also enable the auto mask. Of course, it creates also now the entry in the mask list over here that you can manipulate later if you want. So you just have to paint whatever you want and if you press Alt, you can actually have the erase function in which you erase so you can switch back and forth really quickly to select whatever you want on the picture. Second one, the linear gradient looks more or less the same. You just scroll it through the screen. If you press shift, you make it straight so that you can drag up and down. And if you press alt, you're actually gonna push it both ways. So let me just do a smaller one here in the middle. Select it again, just do one like this. And if I press alt, you can see that now it's gonna stretch both ways at the same time, making the feathering more smooth. So for example, if I just wanted to do a black linear gradient from down here, I could just come up like this and just press Alt and make it feather until here and just use the controls over here on the right to change whatever I want. Now, whenever you have a mask created already, just by clicking on the masking button here won't give you the options. You're gonna have to come to the masks tab now and just click create new mask. And you can now create something like, for example, a radio gradient, which looks very similar to the way it was before. Holding shift is gonna make it stay put in position and just grow outwards. And now we have something really nice, which is this feathering circle in the inside here. So if you just grab it from the inside like that, or you make it bigger, you're gonna make this circle feather more or less outwards. So you could do this first just using the slider. So you could make a very harsh selection like this or a very feathered one, but now you can control it directly on the screen also just by making it bigger, which makes it harsh or just by making it smaller and making it a little bit more soft. And now if I apply it, you're gonna see that I'm just gonna be stacking masks one over the other here on the mask list. So let's check out the new features now. And I tested this with many pictures and it was pretty damn accurate. So let's try first the select subject. To do it, you just come up here to the masking, select subject, wait for a little bit, and then Lightroom is gonna paint with the color that you selected what it thinks is the subject of the picture. It can be a person, but it can also be an object that is more visible or is more contrasting in the picture. On some images, like for example, this mountains picture here, if I do select subject, it doesn't really understand what it is that I want. But I'll show you how to select the mountains in a while. And as you can see, the selection of the subject, the model in this picture here was very, very accurate. It just like managed to cut her out really, really well from the background, just missing some parts of the hair here that were a little bit more difficult, but overall really, really well done. And as usual, if you need to correct something, you can just grab the brush or the gradients or whatever you prefer and refine the selection as you wish. Also selecting the sky is so much easier in pictures like this now, for example. So just masking, select sky and boom. You can see that it's now painted in green over here. And this totally replaces what we had to do before, which would be to do a linear gradient from above and then maybe cancel out what it was selecting from the buildings that you didn't want. Just makes everything much more precise. And now the cool thing is that you can have these interacting with each other. So you can create a radio filter and make it subtract a radio filter or use a color range to add or subtract from the selection. So let's see a bit how you can play with these and when would you use it. So in the case of this picture here, for example, let's just select the sky first. Okay, so now we have a selection of the sky, but I want to have also a mask to affect only the mountains. And to do that, there's no select mountains option, but what you could do is to come up here and whenever you see these three dots, you have some more options that you can access. So in this case, for example, you could rename it that we've done before. You could intersect this mask with something else, some of the other tools that we have here, or you could, for example, duplicate this mask. And now it's mask one copy. So let's just rename this one to mountains. And it still selected the sky. So you could just come here and you have to go inside the mask, inside the option here. So not inside mountains, but inside what's the first mask inside this group and just click here into invert. And then now it's gonna select everything that was not selected before, which is in our case, just the mountains. You could also do it with the apostrophe button. You can see the result on the image by what's turning green and also in the thumbnail by what's turning white. 
So let's dig a little bit deeper now in the interaction of these masks. So let's say, for example, that now that we have the mountains, we have a mask just for the mountains here selected, and we want to affect only the bright part of the mountains. So there are many logical ways you can go about it. It depends on how you think. There are mainly three operations that are going to be able to do inside a mask. These are going to be add, subtract, and if you click here, you're going to also have intersect mask with any of the other options that we have. So for our example, you could grab the mountains and just deselect everything that is dark meaning that you would end up with only the bright parts of the mountains, which is what we wanted in the beginning. Or one other way of thinking about it is to intersect the mask of the mountains with a mask of the bright parts that we see here in the image. Both ways would result with roughly the same selection, but they're just different logical ways of doing the same thing. So for our example, let's just intersect this mask with a luminance range. And the luminance range was also updated and is pretty cool right now. The moment you select it, you already have the drop picker selected on the screen and you can either click somewhere that is more or less the luminosity that you want to select and you can select up to five points or you can just drag and create a rectangle or a square around the area of the luminosity or the roughly the same luminosity that you want to select. So let's say that it's around this more or less and immediately it's going to create the range here on the slider for us to see. And if you've never seen something like this before, don't get scared, it's quite simple. So the box here is exactly what's selected in terms of luminosity, meaning that from dark to bright, we're select the mid range here, more or less. You can make it smaller, meaning that you're gonna select only that specific part of the image, or you can make it much bigger and just select everything. So in our case, let's just say that I wanna select more or less this area here. And these two handles here will just show me the fall off of this selection, meaning that it won't be abrupt into this luminosity level here. It's just going to fade out until here, more or less. And the same thing for the dark part over here. It's not going to cut over here. It's just going to fade out until more or less this area here. This makes for a much softer and better selection. And if you click here on show luminance map, now instead of seeing what's selected, you're going to be able to see what are the bright and what are the darkest parts of the image. So for example, the brightest part is really here in the middle and the top part of the mountains. Instead, out here in the corners is much, much darker. So when you're selecting something over here, you can see that if I just drag the fall off slider down, I'm going to be selecting the parts that weren't selected before. And if I just put the fall off higher and higher, I'm just not going to be grabbing at all these lower and darker parts over here. Okay, so now if I just press enter and accept this, when you click the mountains mask now, you're gonna see that what we have is the result of the intersection that we did. So we don't have just the mountains selected anymore. We have the bright part of the mountains. And if I adjust something here on the sliders, you can see now the effect that it generates. So for example, I could make it a little bit warmer. And it's just much more natural than if I had selected all the mountains and also the parts here that wouldn't be as much affected by the light of the sun at that moment, like the parts that were really exposed to it. Let's go to this picture over here and test the color range. So if you click it the same way as the luminance range, you're just going to have the drop picker in which you can drag and drop something around the area of roughly the color that you want to select. And I'm going to find a little bit strange that the red car just turned into a weird yellow. And this is because we have the overlay as green. And this is exactly what I was telling before about the color of the overlay that you choose. If you grab something that is going to interact with the color of the image or is just like really similar to what you can see around, it's going to be difficult to spot what's selected actually. So this is one of the cases in which you would probably prefer something like the image on black and white or maybe color overlay on black and white, something that you can clearly spot what's being selected. So in this case, for example, we're seeing that we're selecting not only the red on the car, but also the red in other parts of the screen. Let me move this out of here. And one way of deselecting all these parts over here, if I didn't want them, would be to just, for example, subtract it. And then I could just grab, for example, a brush, make it a little bit smaller. I'll just leave flow and density really high and just deselect, depaint everything that I didn't want to make part of this selection. I'm going to make it really, really rough just for the sake of showing you how this works over here. Okay, that looks about right. I'm just gonna go back to color overlay. And here in the color range options, you're gonna have refine, meaning the tolerance on how much around the color that you selected, you want to be selected also. As you can see, there are some parts that are still looking a little bit red. So we could go way up here with the tolerance 
and just make the selection a little bit bigger. Or we could just go way, way down and select just specifically the color and the tones that we clicked when we started this masking. In this case, I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna make this overlay 100% so that I can identify a little bit easier which parts are still red on the image. And right about here, it's very difficult to spot something red, meaning that almost all the car is select and I'm not seeing anything changing around it. So it looks like it's pretty good right now. Okay, so I'll just turn off the overlay for now and the car should be perfectly selected. So if I just come down here, I could actually change the color really easily right now. So let's say I just wanted the car to be blue like this, for example, and it would be almost done. As you can see, we can still spot some shadows of red here and there. So you can still come back and refine it a little bit more like this, for example. And now you could work on new layers of mask to fix the other things that you didn't want to select. So let's say that you didn't want the symbol here to be affected also. So let's go to 100%, go to color range. I'm just going to subtract a brush and let me just auto mask this. And I'm just going to paint it over here like this and deselect this from the original selection of the car. And suddenly this becomes the original color as it should be. Okay, let me show you one last example of how these interactions between masks can be really cool. So in this picture here, for example, I'm just gonna do two different things. First one is gonna be the color range. I'm just gonna pick the yellow trees and you're gonna see that it selects them really, really well. And if I just wanna make them a little bit brighter or maybe just make them a little bit more orangey, I could just do whatever I wanted maybe a bit more saturated or something like that. Okay, so this first mask, I'm just gonna call it obviously yellow trees. And this one, we'll leave it as it is. It was just a proof that the color range works really, really well. For the second thing, I just wanna add a gradient into the road from the sun that was coming here from the right. So I just want to affect the road, but I wanna affect it in a linear way from right to left. So I'm just gonna grab the color range I'm gonna select here part of the road and you're gonna see that it's selecting mostly everywhere because there was this bluish tone from before sunrise that if I go up with the refines, you're gonna select even more. But if I go down, you're gonna see that it's gonna begin selecting just the road, which has the majority of this color and some surrounding trees, but not that many. So I'm just gonna leave the refine really, really low, like here, for example. And if I change something right now, you're gonna see that I'm affecting the picture as a whole. But as I said, I want to affect it in the way that the sun would do it. So in this case, I could just come here to color range and intersect this mask with a linear gradient and just pull it in the direction that I wanted. And then now you're going to see that as soon as I pull it to the left, I'm going to be reselecting what was the selection before. So I'm just going to make it much softer from right to left. Okay, that looks about right. I'm just going to turn off the overlay. And now whatever I change here, let's say, for example, if I pull up the exposure, it totally looks like a source of light coming from the right and hitting some of the trees and mostly on the road over there. So I could warm it up if I wanted. I could just make it brighter or darker. And this interaction between the masks makes this possible. All right, guys, this was just an overview of the new tools available in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you have any kind of questions, just drop them in the comment section below and we can help out each other. If you don't follow me on Instagram, do so, so that you can see the first pictures edited with these new tools in Lightroom and also to see some of the backstage of the production of all these videos. And now I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.